Hi Dan here, hope you're doing really well. I'm going to teach you how to play Tommy Cogbill's amazing line on Memphis Soul Stew by King Curtis. So I'm using my 1968 Fender Precision for this. It's got heavy gauge James Jameson Labella flat wounds on it. That's very much part of the tone, part of the sound. And I just found a little bit of sponge lying around and I put that underneath here. It's just a foam mute was used a lot back in those days. So you get this sort of uh, slightly dead muted tone. He would have used a 1959 uh, bass that was lying around at American Sound Studio at the time. But the bass line is, is it's an amazing one. And I'm going to show you how to play it. There's a section at the end that goes into sort of a different key, and I'll show you that bit as well. But at the beginning it goes... So it stays on an E, and I'm playing that 7th fret on the A string. And Tommy Cogwell used to do that a lot. He used to just play one note and, and inject some rhythm into it with, by using 16th note. It's just one note, just sounds so cool. So that's on the seventh fret. And then we're going down to the to the B to the C sharp. That's the, the seventh to the ninth fret of the E string. Changes the rhythm a little bit each time, but those are the notes nonetheless. And what I want to do is, after I show you the bass line, I'll show you how these notes fit into the key because that's going to really help you and how it, how it lies over the chord. So the main bass line goes. So we've got that E again on the seventh fret A string. I'll show you the intervals as we go. This is really important. So the chord is based around an E, E7. And that's the arpeggio. So we have the root. And we have a fifth, which is just simply two frets across and one string down towards the floor. That's the fifth of the chord. One more string on the same fret is the octave. And then two frets down from that one, that's the minor seventh. And the basis, the bulk of the bass line is built around those notes. You must know these intervals, these notes that come from chords. They're called chord tones or arpeggios. Then they're made from intervals. So that's the rhythm really slowly. And then we go down to those notes we played earlier in the intro. B to the C sharp. A word about technique before we dive a little bit more into the into the intervals is that because we've got an octave going on here, I'm playing the first note with the first finger and I'm playing the octave with the little finger. If you find it easier to use your third finger, then by all means do that. I'm also um, barring, I'm using one finger to play two notes that are on different strings. I'm using my little finger to do that on the ninth fret of the D and the G strings. But you could use your third and fourth if you want. In terms of plucking, I'm not really sticking to any hard and fast rules here. That bit was all alternate plucking. But that bit there, I'm playing the note. I'm trying to I'm trying to mirror Cogbill's feel as much as I can. It's very in the pocket. The notes are quite short, they're quite funky, especially that last one. And that bit I'm raking. I'm using my index finger to drag itself across both the G and the D strings. I'm doing this a little bit, floating thumb, just to mute everything. I want everything to be really controlled. I don't want any strings ringing out. Now, the B and the C sharp are the fifth and the major sixth. This is really important. If you have a root and it's on the A string, Remember we said the fifth is two uh, frets across and one string down towards the floor? That's the fifth. That note down the octave, you'll find is on the same fret as the root note, just drop down a string. 
and two frets across from that is what's called the major sixth. And soul, Motown, old school R&B, these notes feature so many times that you must learn it because what will happen is that you'll be able to create your own bass lines doing this. But when you go to listen to music, you'll hear that. If you ever hear... Um, you'll hear lots of bass lines to do that. And when you hear that, you'll go, ah, I can hear that. That's the root five and the six. And whenever you're on the D or the A string, you can play that pattern. Okay, so after that, it just does that throughout the whole song until the end section when it just it moves to A. And we have exactly the same set of notes. Now, since I'm on the, a, uh, the E string here as a root, this is the note A now on the fifth fret of the E string. That little section there is exactly the same as before. Root, five, octave, minus seventh. And obviously we don't have a lower string to go to. So the, the five and the six you play as an open string E, second fret F sharp. Otherwise it's the same pattern. Four bars of that. Then it goes to D, and here we can play the same pattern as before. It's exactly the same pattern as I taught you before, but now on the fifth fret. Back to the A7. And it goes to E. And the, the rest of the song from that point sticks to that chord progression at the end there. You can hear, by the way, how Jacko got a lot of his lines. Uh, Tommy Cogbill was a big influence on him. And I really can't recommend enough learning soul, old school R&B and Motown lines. There's so much in there that is so relevant. Rock music was very much influenced by this style of music. So when you learn these patterns, you'll hear them and you'll see them cropping up all the time. So at the end there, that's just, you've got your A, your root note. There's a major third on the fourth fret of the A string. And that's just a chromatic walk up to the fifth. You hear that a lot. Major pentatonic. He didn't do that in this, but if you listen to Son of a Preacher Man by Dusty Springfield and listen to the end of that, Cogbill's just all over it with all kinds of fills and busy playing. So I think what you can do, you can download this backing track, by the way, but it's only on E7, so you can only jam around that E7. I think it's 113 beats per minute. Um, but if you're jamming over the tune and you want to connect the chords a bit... Uh, See there? There's that chromatic walk up again by the time I reach the end. I'm at the E7. I mean, the bass line is iconic. You probably wouldn't do any of that fancy stuff I was doing at the end. You'd probably stick to what Tommy Cogbill was doing because it's brilliant. But it's just based around blues harmony and based around dominant seventh chords. And can you see how the patterns are just the same all the way throughout? And if you've got a great tone, you don't have to have a 1968 P bass or a vintage P bass to do this, by the way. Flat wounds certainly help. Some sort of a sponge or foam mute at the end certainly helps. But really, it's the it's trying to play as you know the notes as funky as as Tommy Cogbill does so that's what you want to try and get as much as possible forget the gear just try and get the the, the feel of this down which is quite tough keep the notes muted keep your fingers alternating unless you're doing the the raking and keep your hand position sort of set and then you're good to go. So I'm going to do a lot more lessons like this. So if you've got any, any questions at all about this or any other lessons that you want me to do, put it in the comments below. Please do subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching. Have a great day.